welcome, welcome, welcome to Worship at the Well. That is the Aimwell Baptist Church of Mobile, Alabama. Today is going to be a refreshing experience for you. Listen, this is how you can make it even more refreshing. Even right now, before we go into worship, block out every distraction. Whatever happened this week, it's over with. I want you to block it out right now so you can focus on the worship and the word that's coming forth today. And would you also do us the favor of even right now before we go into worship to hosting your own watch party. If you're on Facebook, you can host your own watch party or you can just share this video on your various social media platforms and just help other people worship here at the well. Let's go into worship. so thankful that God woke you up this morning and you can say just like that song it could have been me outdoors with no food and no clothes all along without a fringe or just another number with a tragic end but here's my favorite part of that song he didn't see fit 
to let none of these things be. And by your way and by your power, Jesus, he keeps on blessing me. And so my only response is thank you, Lord, for all that you've done for me. Is that your testimony today? Is that your testimony? Are you grateful that God blessed you in spite of you? That God allowed you to wake up this morning. God allowed you to go throughout your day, go through another week. And we are just grateful for that. Listen, welcome to the worship at the well. Uh, we are so grateful that you chose to worship with us today. Listen, if you're streaming with us and you're interacting on our thread, would you go ahead and speak to about five people that you see on the thread? Just say, hey, how you doing? Just make sure you check. Go ahead and listen. Don't, don't, don't be saved and stuck up. Y'all know how we do it. Go ahead and speak to about four or five people that's in the group, in the thread, just so we can make sure that we're spreading love and checking on everybody. Just ask them. Go ahead and ask them. There you go. There you go. We're worshiping at the well. And though we're worshiping differently, we can cyberly fellowship. So this is how we do it. Speak to somebody. Wave at somebody. Uh, in, in the text thread, let them know that you love them. And in the words of Lula Payne, I can't, you can't do anything about it. Amen. We're so grateful uh, that you came to worship with us today. But right before uh, we get ready to get into the word of God, I want us to take a moment and pray as a family. Let's pray together because I believe that even in times like this, while we're going through this global pandemic, prayer is still the most powerful tool that every child of God has. Would you do me a favor right where you are? I know we can't join hands like we normally would if we were in person, but would you touch your screen? Would you touch your, your phone? Maybe would you touch your computer screen wherever you are, wherever you're looking at this? Would you touch and agree with us as we go to God in prayer? God, we thank you. First of all, for another day, we thank you that in spite of ourselves, you woke us up this morning. And so before we ask you for anything, we want to thank you for everything that you've done. God, you've been so good to us. And because of that, we just want to pause and say thank you. God, we thank you for things being as well as they are. Now, God, as we prepare to go into your word, we ask that you uh, speak to our hearts, speak to our souls, God, because we need a word from you. God, for my brothers and sisters that's struggling through and during this pandemic, during Perhaps this quarantine, God, in the name of Jesus, send your spirit. Send your spirit to comfort their hearts. Send your spirit to guide them. And God, help all of us to forever be mindful that this too shall pass. And this didn't come to stay. It's going to come to pass. And so we're believing, God, that in your own time, you're going to bring us out of this situation. And when we come out of this, we're going to declare, God, that we're stronger we're wiser and we're better because you took us through this valley of this pandemic. God bless us. Bless the word. In Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. Again, brothers and sisters, we are so grateful that you chose to virtually connect and worship with us today. Today is going to be a refreshing experience for you. Today we have something special for you because many of you know that the month of May... Uh, is, is, is set aside for Mental Health Awareness Month. Uh, it, it, it is uh, set aside to highlight uh, and to educate uh, those of us who aren't aware about the serious nature of mental health. Um, I do know that mental health is, is, is somewhat of a stigma in the African-American community. And I hope today is, is through this message and some other things that we have specially uh, planned for today, that you will uh, not only be refreshed by the message, but also informed by the information that we're going to give you today. Listen, I'm going to preach a, a message in a different way. I normally uh, do not do what I'm about to do, which is going from text to text. Uh, today, I'm doing a topical message uh, on the sensitive subject of mental health, because I believe all of us at some point or another will deal with some form of mental illness, some type of mental distress. And that's my hope and my prayer that whatever is shared today will help you uh, refresh, first of all, what you're dealing with and also inform and inspire you uh, to seek out help and to help improve your overall mental health. Listen, today I, I, I want to preach from this subject. Are you ready for it? 
My mind is playing tricks on me. You heard me right. My mind is playing tricks on me. Brothers and sisters, what's interesting about this very sensitive issue known as mental health, one of the very interesting issues is, is that it is such a common thing in our culture. In the United States, listen to this startling statistic. In the United States, almost half of adults, that is 46.4%, will experience mental illness during their lifetime. That means simply brothers and sisters, that those of us that do struggle, and notice I'm saying us, because just because I'm a preacher, just because I'm a pastor, uh, does not exempt me from going through the same anxiety, distress, and mental anguish that all of us will face at times. Here's, this, here's another startling statistic, brothers and sisters. 5% of adults, 18 or older, experience a mental illness in any one year. This is equivalent to more than 43 million people experiencing this, brothers and sisters, in their lifetime. Here's the first thing I have for you to know. When you're going through mental struggle and strain, know this first thing, you're not alone. That you're not alone in this struggle, this mental strain that you find yourself. Perhaps somebody, their mental struggle has intensified due to this pandemic, due to the quarantine, due to job loss and family loss, and just simply having to accept things that you cannot control. And can I tell you, when those things compound, when those things come together in our heads, can I tell you, our minds can start to play tricks on us. It can start to convince us of certain negativities and certain uh, possibilities about our very own lives simply because at times of distress and times of stress, our minds can play tricks on us. Can I tell you, brothers and sisters, God is so awesome that despite what we feel on the inside of us, God has never allowed us to go through any particular situation that his word cannot help us and navigate us through that particular situation. Because what you got to understand is, brothers and sisters, sometimes you can have strong faith, you can have strong willpower, but no matter how many struggles, no matter how many uh, uh, scriptures you may know, no struggle will exempt you. No scripture will exempt you from encountering certain struggles. And can I tell you, it's going to hurt you. It's going to make you feel like you're hopeless. It's going to render you uh, even feeling like you have been defeated, brothers and sisters. You don't believe me? Uh, that, that, there's a man in Job chapter 1 by the name of Job. And the Bible says he went through so much. He went through so much stress and so much strain. Uh, he, he, he said, naked I came into this world and naked I shall return there. Job had to go through some stress. He, in verse 21 of verse number 1, it says that, but in verse 20, it says that he was literally so distressed that he cried. That shows us, brothers and sisters, that this man was a perfect and upright man, brothers and sisters. But even Job. Being spiritual, following God, and being faithful to what God had told him, he still had to go through some struggles. He had to go through some strains where he himself, the Bible says that he that he literally tore his robe and shaved his head. In a, in a perpetual Jewish form of mourning, he took time to grieve. Because sometimes, brothers and sisters, life will make you grieve. I know you think you're strong. And I know that you, you believe that you have all of the answers. But can I tell you, as strong as you think you are, your mind can still play tricks on you. It can still play tricks on you. What I love about this sensitive issue, brothers and sisters, is, is that, that when, when the word of God is open, and I believe when the word of God is uh, applied to our life, not just something that you hear on Sunday, but on Sunday, but when you learn how to apply it in a practical sense. That word of God can then become what the psalm writer says, a lamp unto your feet and a light unto your path. I thought it was interesting, brothers and sisters, but that comedian Neil Brennan, he, interestingly enough, defines depression as a disease. He says, 
that depression is a disease that attacks your mind. Can I tell you that while Neil Brennan has probably has no psychological training or study or background, that's exactly right. Because sometimes your mind can be so weak and so fragile that it, your mind begins to attack itself with depression. Perhaps that may be where somebody is right now. Somebody is juggling so much, you're trying to keep your household in order. And now you've gone from having to parent with a limited period of time. And now it's 24-7. Your kids can't go anywhere. You can't go anywhere. And now the same issues that were here before have now been compounded and intensified due to this pandemic. Can I tell you, brothers and sisters, there are so many things that we can't control. There are so many things that we can't change. And, and even though that we go through these times where our mind starts to play tricks on us, we need to remember and remind ourselves, as I've said a few times already, that there is nothing in life that we cannot handle and cannot face when we have an adequate understanding of the Word of God. If you'll follow me, brothers and sisters, I want to talk a few about a few sensitive areas that have come up uh, during 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 my, my time with God, and God wanted me to share uh, with you today. Would you go in your Bibles, turn in your Bibles to 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 7 through 9. We're going to have a little Bible study. I hope that's okay. If it's not, so be it. You're going to have to put up with it today. <laughs> Amen. Go ahead and grab your Bibles. 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 7 through 9. And I love this. This is one of my favorite stories in the Bible. I'll give you a moment to get there. Second Corinthians chapter 12, verses 7 through 9. It says this. Notice this. He says, And lest I should be exalted above measure by the abundance of the revelations, a thorn in the flesh was given to me, a messenger of Satan to buffet me, lest I be exalted above measure. Concerning this thing, I pleaded with the Lord three times that it might depart from me. And he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you. For my strength is made perfect in your weakness. I love this. He says, therefore, most gladly, I would rather boast in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest on me. Because, brothers and sisters, this text speaks to me. And it also should speak to us concerning the things in our lives that we can't change and we cannot control. We're living in a global pandemic. There is no vaccine at this current moment. They are working on it. And the one thing that all of us perhaps are wondering in our minds, when Will this day end? When will this pandemic end? And there are some times, and I know that that, that that may be a struggle for somebody. Because you're saying, I can handle life better when I can just pray and it, it moves in a few days. And I can just pray a few times and I can control it. But my biggest struggle in my life is trying to live my life when I'm not even in control of it. Can I tell you, brothers and sisters, that's... Must be where Paul felt in this particular text. Notice what he says. He says, he said, I pray to God three times. Three times. He said, I prayed to God three times that he would remove this thorn. This, this thorn, brothers and sisters, figuratively, we really do not know the true nature of the thorn. Some have regarded this thorn as that Paul was receiving some criticism saying that he was a good writer, but he couldn't preach. Others suggest that this was some chronic ophthalmic issue that he had with his eye uh, and, and that, that he could, no matter how much he prayed, he couldn't be healed from it. Others suggested that this was some besetting sin. This thorn was some besetting sin that Paul could not stop or control. But whatever it is, brothers and sisters, while the text doesn't let us know, whatever this thorn was, we can know that it was so painful that he had to pray three times. Can I tell you? That if you've been praying more uh, during this pandemic, that is sometimes how God works. 
Sometimes God will allow us to be inflicted with more struggle and more strain and more trouble because he knows that the trouble is going to put us in the right position. And that's on our knees. Can I tell you that whenever a situation knocks you to your knees, you're in the best position you can be in in life. To be in a position and a posture to decide, I need to go to God in prayer. But brothers and sisters, please be reminded that just because you prayed about it, just because you believe God and you said, God, I need you to move it, does not always mean that God is, is going to move it when you want him to. In this global pandemic, we can pray, we can fast. But the, the truth of the matter is, it will not end until God wants it to end. So therefore, brothers and sisters, how do you, must, how do you face life when you've been praying for something to come to an end? You've been praying for things to get better. You've been praying for situations to improve, but they don't. Notice what he says uh, in this text, he says, he says, he's prayed to God, God, remove it. God, take it away. God, take this pain away. But notice what God says. God says, my grace is sufficient for you. I love that because you must understand, brothers and sisters, there is a few different forms of grace. One form of grace is the saving grace of God. Say saving grace. Saving grace is the grace that we experience when we accepted Jesus Christ as our personal Savior. That is, that he saved us. He gave us a saving grace that when we deserve to die in our sins, he saved us with his grace. But brothers and sisters, that's not the kind of grace that God is offering to Paul through this painful situation he's going through. No, this is not speaking of the saving grace but this is speaking of the sustaining grace. Say sustaining grace. Sustaining grace, brothers and sisters, is simple. It's, it's simply the grace that God gives us that when things do not change and do not turn around when we want them, sustaining grace says, I'm going to keep you all together. Can I tell you, brothers and sisters, that's probably the best kind of grace that you can have after you've experienced saving grace. But to experience a sustaining grace, sustaining grace says that you can be going through hell. You can be going through hot water and you're struggling mentally. But somehow sustaining grace says I can still get up and get ready for work. I can still go to that home that's not all the way peaceful the way I would desire. I can go back to that job where people don't like me because sustaining grace says I will not take the pain away, but I will help you to take the pain. I'm trying not to preach this thing, but I promise you I'm getting happy talking about it because I know that there are some people who are listening to me right now, and that's your testimony. God has given you sustaining grace. How in the world could you take, uh, take the enemy's attacks against you but still keep a smile on your face and still be able to love your enemies and still be able to pray for them? It's only because God has a way of giving you sustaining grace. Some of you have dealt with some, some, some dreadful diagnoses from the doctors, but look at you now, years later, surviving stuff that people didn't think you were going to survive. You didn't think you were going to survive. It's only because uh, of sustaining grace. It's not because you're so strong. It's simply because of the sustaining grace of God that's on your life. Can I tell you, brothers and sisters, that in this time, in this pandemic, one of the things we need to understand that God gives us sustaining grace. And sustaining grace says that even if you can't go to work, I still am a provider. Even if, if you don't know how, how you're going to make it through, I still have my hand on your life. Can I tell you, brothers and sisters, that's probably the best news I can have for you today is that in this pandemic, I know it may be messing with your head and your mind is beginning to play tricks on you. But can I tell you, don't you let your mind get the best of you. Don't you let that negativity get the best of you because you have something called sustaining grace and sustaining grace says, I'll keep you. I'll give you a good night's sleep. Even with trouble all around you, I'll give you enough peace and enough joy to go to sleep at night. Can I tell you, brothers and sisters, I love that because sometimes it is our inability to accept what we cannot change 
and cannot control that causes us so much mental distress and mental anguish. But the other thing that I wanted to talk about today, brothers and sisters, that God pressed on, on me was this idea of suicide. I know I'm not here uh, because there's a Christian understanding that believes that if you kill yourself, you're automatically going to hell. That's not what I believe because I believe uh, that, that when Jesus died for our sins, he died for all of them. Uh, but 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 my but my but my job today, my 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 approach today is not merely brothers and sisters uh, to talk about the the end result of going to hell. But here is my 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 chief aim. My chief aim today is because suicide, in 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 essence, is 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 really someone looking for a way out. That's what it is. And can I tell you, brothers and sisters, uh, as as holy as we are, that you never know. The very person you speak to every day, the very person that you that you see at work could be one disaster away from deciding that life is no worth, no longer worth the living. Can I tell you, brothers and sisters, that sometimes when people are struggling with suicide, it's because they're looking for a way out, because life has a way of cornering you on all sides and you feel like there are no other options. Can I tell you, brothers and sisters, you are not alone in this thing. I love this because in Psalm 55, go to Psalm 55. Go to Psalm 55. Psalm 55. I told you we're going to do a little Bible study. Uh, I'm trying not to preach this thing. Uh, but, but, but here it is. Because the psalmist David was looking, he was looking for a way out. He was looking for a way out of the situation that he was going through, brothers and sisters. Notice what he says in Psalm 55. Verses four through seven. He says, my heart is severely pained within me. Do you hear that? And the terrors of death have fallen upon me. He's afraid that he's going to die. Fearfulness and trembling have come upon me. And horror has overwhelmed me. So I said, oh, that I had wings like a dove. I would fly away and be at rest. Can I tell you, brothers and sisters, these words should grip you because sometimes life is just like what the psalmist says. It's so much pain within you that you feel like death is better than life. Can I tell you something? That I don't care how many, how many times you feel like you're out of options. Can I tell you? That when God is on your side and when God has his hand on you, child of God, you're never out of options. God always has another move. There is a, there's a, there's a interesting artistic picture that was painted of, 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 of some, some people playing, playing chess. And during, during this, during this, uh, this art exhibit, uh, that was a, a expert chess player who, who went and saw this wonderful picture of people playing chess. When he saw this painting, he saw this picture, he, he looked at it and he studied it for hours, to which uh, you can hear in the exhibit hall, he screamed, well, wait, but wait, the game is not over. He's, even though the picture was entitled Checkmate, which means it was over, he says, the other person has another move. He said that while the picture looks on one side to be checkmate and it's over, that what the other person doesn't realize is that he still has another move. Can I tell you, child of God, that no matter how, how, how hopeless you may feel, no matter how, how, how much you may have be struggling with the idea that this is it. Can I tell you, God is never out of option. God always has another move. Because David here was looking for a way of escape from his heaviness that he felt in his heart. And he desires, get this brothers and sisters, a unrealistic result for his, for his escape. Because that's exactly what suicide is. It's an unrealistic option that you're gonna be able to escape the problem. Can I tell you, it doesn't really get rid of the problem. 
It just helps you escape. But can I tell you, suicide is merely a permanent solution to a temporary problem. I love what my grandmother used to say. She said, I'm so glad that trouble don't last always. Can I urge you today? I know you may, uh, I, I may, this may be a sensitive subject for some, but can I tell you, you have so many other reasons to live, so many reasons to survive. And I promise you, if you can just learn to allow God strength, the first thing I need you to do is pray, ask God, but also I need you to reach out and reach out for help because I need you to understand you are not alone. And the thing about it is what you'll discover if you just keep on living through that trouble, even though it may feel like you feel a trap and you may be trying to escape out of it. Can I tell you, you got to realize that while certain days and certain weeks and certain months may be bad, a bad small period of time does not equal a bad life. That just because you had a bad day doesn't mean you're going to have a bad life. Just because you had a bad week doesn't mean you're going to have a bad, just because you had a bad year does not equal a bad life. Because whatever you do, you cannot forget that this is the day. <laughs> That the Lord has made and, and, and you've got to choose that no matter how stormy or rough that day is, it's still a day and you still got to rejoice and be glad in it. Can I tell you something? David was looking for a way out in, in Psalm 55. He's talking about his pain. He's talking about his struggle. But I love this, brothers and sisters. I love what verses 16 through 17. I hope you, your Bibles are still open because it says this in, in verses 16 and 17. Uh, in, in Psalm 55, it says, As for me, get this, I will call upon God, and the Lord shall save me. Even in the morning and at noon, I will pray, and I will cry aloud, and he shall hear my voice. Can I tell you, brothers and sisters, just hold on a little while longer. Because I believe, I simply believe, that if you can just hold on, if you can just hold on to God, that I know it's hard. But can I tell you something? When you feel like times are rough for you, it's, 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 that's not a time to quit. That's a time to get help. That's a time to, to connect with people who can help build you up to seek even uh, professional help. Because we all at times need to talk to somebody about the struggles that we're going through. Here's the last thing I'll share with you. Because a lot of things that are, that are happening during this time. Uh, is um, is 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 not only through mental depression and and going through suicidal thoughts and accepting things that 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 is one gamut. But then there's another prevalent gamut that I that I cannot close um, the, this this side of the message without addressing, and that is grief, because the death toll now. Uh, is over 100,000 people in our country. So many people are experiencing loss at such an alarming rate. And the question is, how do we deal with losing a loved one? How do we deal with losing somebody who we didn't expect to lose? How, how, do, we, how do we deal with uh, the death of a loved one? Because, can I tell you, brothers and sisters, outside of this pandemic, we've had to become very common with death, but even now death is happening at such an alarming rate and the even sadder part that you can't grieve them the way you would if under normal circumstances. Many of us are having to uh, bury loved ones at the graveside and many, uh, some are not even allowed to say goodbye due to the seriousness of this pandemic. But I want to close like this, brothers and sisters. And, 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 and once I get done, I have something even more exciting to share with you. I want you to go to 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 13 through 14. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 13 through 14. I give those of you that are uh, turning in an actual Bible book uh, some more time. And if you're having struggling, you have struggling trying to find 1 Thessalonians, uh, go ahead and use the table of contents. Uh, uh, we, I can't wait on you. We got stuff to do today. <laughs> 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 13 through 
14. And it says like this, but I do not want you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning those who have fallen asleep, lest you sorrow as others who have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so God will bring with him those who sleep in Jesus. Paul, brothers and sisters, is talking to the church of Thessalonica about those who had experienced death, heinous deaths, persecution, and the church began to be weighed down with grief. The church began to be weighed down because it's a struggle to lose those who you love. Brothers and sisters, I love this, what Paul says, because he uses the very familiar terminology. He says, brethren, I will have you not to be ignorant. Because there are at least four occasions where Paul uses this exact phrase. The first time he uses it in Roman in chapter 11, verse 25, he says, be not ignorant, ignorant about God's plan for Israel. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 1, he says, don't be ignorant about spiritual gifts. 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse number 8, verse number 8, it says, don't be ignorant about suffering and trials in this Christian life. But last in 1 Thessalonians, he talks about don't be ignorant about those who sleep. And he talks about the second coming of Jesus Christ. Paul shows us, brothers and sisters, that we do not have to allow the grief to crush us. Paul is suggesting, brothers and sisters, that when those of us that are children of God, when those, when those of us that are child, children of God lose somebody who we love, Paul says, we don't grieve like everybody else grieves. I love this, brothers and sisters, because he uses the term fallen asleep. Paul uses a Jewish idiom common in this day, referring to death as sleep. Sleep was not a term used for everyone who died, but this term, get this, is an exclusive term that can only be used by those who are believers. That means, brothers and sisters, that when Paul speaks of those who are asleep, who have a relationship with Jesus Christ, Paul says they're not dead, they're just asleep. He says because the idea is that there is no rest for those who don't have a relationship with Jesus Christ. I know I'm not giving the invitation to discipleship, but can I tell you something? I can't think of a better time in history to make sure that I had a relationship with Jesus Christ than right now. Literally, tomorrow is not promised. And I don't know about you, but I'm so glad that this term sleep in this text applies to me because I am a child of God. But I know, brothers and sisters, you're saying, well, what do you mean, Pastor Trey? What, what are you saying about those that we lose? The truth of the matter is, our belief is, is that if someone dies, Notice what he says. He says, sleep in Jesus. He says, those that die in Christ, those that are asleep in Jesus, he's saying, those who have a relationship with Jesus Christ. He said, those people, they're, they're, they're not dead, they're just asleep. And I know somebody's saying, well, Pastor Trey, that sounds good. And, and, and that, that may be a good word uh, that you can share with us today. But Pastor Trey, what, what do I do? How do I still handle? Because it's still hard when I lose someone. Even though they may be a child of God, even though they may have attended church and have a, a viable relationship with Jesus Christ, what do I do when I have to bury my loved one who they're a child of God, but it's still hard? Can I tell you something? Is that though, though, though the struggle of, of knowing that they're, not, they're no longer with you anymore, you need to understand this, is that, 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 that this term is so rich because it says they're just asleep. And when you think about the fact that people uh, are asleep and you're still alive, you have to understand this, that all of God's children don't fall asleep at the same time. But though we do not fall asleep at the same time, 
we are all trust and believe that one day we're going to get up at the same time. Uh, I, I remember I was talking to a friend of mine who uh, has multiple kids. And uh, uh, as we were talking, I could see his kids, uh, so that they would they begin to wind down because we were talking pretty late. Uh, and, and I heard the noise started to decrease to where it was total silence. And he said, wait a minute, man. Uh, let, let me go check on my kids. And, and and I said to him, hey, man, do you need to call me back? He said, no, I, I, I don't have to call you back. I said, all right. So I, I, I waited for him. He went in and he checked because uh, as the noise was decreasing, what he said to me, I said, well, what's the problem? I said, I don't hear anything. He said, well, I have to check on my kids because uh, some of my kids go to sleep um, uh, earlier than some. So I got some that that go to sleep at 7 but others don't fall asleep to 9, 30, 10 o'clock. And, and, and therefore, I've got to check uh, to make sure that all of my kids are okay. I said, all right. And so he said, uh, he said, he said, but, but man, listen, um, I, I, I got I to gotta make sure all of them are asleep by now because all of them at some point are going to have to go to sleep. I said, all right. Uh, I said, but man, wait a minute. If they're going to sleep at different times, surely it's a challenge to wake them up. Uh, every morning because if they're going to sleep hours apart, certainly they're going to wake up hours apart. He said, well, no, that's not how it works. He said, because in the morning, once I call their name and say it's time to wake up, everybody gets up at the same time. That's all I want to share with you today, brothers and sisters, that, that every child of God, we all got to go to sleep at one point. At some point, we all have to fall asleep. All of us will have to go to sleep. But the truth of the matter is, on that great getting up morning, God's going to call our names. And though we went to sleep at different times, the good news is we're all going to get up at the same time. And that is that we're going to, those of us that are saved, that have a relationship with Jesus Christ, we are going to get up at the same time. I hope you were blessed. Were you blessed today? I hope you were blessed. If you were blessed today, would you type, type in the comments, I was blessed by this word. I was blessed by this word. I was blessed by this word. Go ahead and do that right now. I was blessed by this word. God bless you. God bless you. We hope that this was a refreshing experience for you today. But can I tell you, brothers and sisters, that this sensitive issue of mental health is not just a matter of seeking spiritual help. It's also a matter of seeking professional help. Because I believe that while uh, professional uh, help as it relates to counseling is a stigma in the African-American community, there is absolutely nothing wrong with seeking professional help. Your Bible says faith without works is dead. That simply means you can, you can seek scriptural and spiritual help from the Bible. But God, just the same way God put words in the Bible, that speak to your situation right now. God also created practitioners and psychologists and counselors that he has also created to also assist in helping you too. I recently sat down with one of our leading practitioners in this area, and her name is Chandra Brown. We sat down and had a very sensitive conversation about mental health. And just in case you were about to log off, don't you log off. You take your hand off that log off button. Nope. There is more, and here it is right now. Well, um, I hope that you all were blessed by the message that was just shared. As I told you, uh, we want to make sure uh, that not only are we giving you all spiritual tools, but also practical tools um, that will help you uh, through, during this pandemic. I am so, so glad, so grateful uh, that I uh, chose to talk to one of our local practitioners, she is an amazing person, has an amazing practice going on. Uh, speak of Ms. Chandra Brown, she is here with us today. Would y'all welcome her? Welcome her to the well. Uh, we thank you so much. Thank, thank you. you so much. Thank you so much thank you. for just for allowing us to come uh, to take some time out of your busy schedule. Yeah, thank you. I appreciate it. So listen, so um, uh, this, this pandemic is such a... Goodness, it's such a heavy thing to deal with. It is. Uh, mentally. It is. Because we are, especially with, with church, we're noticing having a lot of people just going through 
uh, a lot with quarantine and then not, you know, jobs. So people are losing jobs, losing family. All these losses happen at an alarming rate and it's causing such a mental strain and stress uh, on, on people we know. And of course, I know that you have quite a few uh, people that come to you on a weekly basis mm -hmm. that you're reaching. So, so I'm curious, so what, what would you say are some of the reoccurring things that you're seeing that's going on with people during, during this pandemic? Well, we're seeing our folks who are anxious and depressed, and even to the um, extent that they may even be suicidal by everything that's going on right now, because it's a difficult time. Because not only are we um, being able, we're having to parent, we're having to work, we're having to do all the things that we normally do, but we're still under a pandemic. And so if we're watching the news, we're hearing that the cases are increasing daily. Daily, right. And as businesses reopen, as our communities reopen, we're also having to battle, like, all right, so I had to quarantine for two to three months, maybe, depending upon how and where you are. Right. And now I have to go back into the world. Right. And what's that process? And there hasn't really been as much leadership or guidance as many of us would have wanted, giving us the directives we needed. Absolutely. And so it's just been a really, like, it's normal for folks to feel anxious, to feel depressed, to feel scared, to be nervous, to really not know like what should I be doing and how should I be doing. Absolutely. Yeah, I, I know um I know for me personally, I just know with um, and I can speak for mostly pastors, mm -hmm. we are struggling with, you know, you sometimes you take for granted that you're able to see the people you serve, uh, and to not have seen them since the fourth Sunday of March for us and you know we're we're going on two months now that we haven't seen them and not been able to reach and touch them. And fortunately, uh, we haven't had many cases. We have one person that did contract the virus, mm -hmm. but they have actually recovered from it, from what I was just told, and so excited about that. Yeah. But just not being able to uh, see them. And I think for some of our uh, seasoned saints, mm -hmm. I like to say old at all, right? <laughs> so yeah, uh, for some of our seasoned saints, uh, you know, who are up in age, churches is their their outlet, right? And so them them not being able to get out and come to Bible study, Sunday school, or church, it is is kind of I can imagine weighing on them too. What what would you say would be some things we could do? Uh, of course, we we're going to talk about later coming to see yes, you know businesses like yourself, yeah. but. What, what are some things that I think that there's some practical things we can do at home possibly to kind of help with our overall mental mental stability? Yeah. Um, I think what's always interesting during times of disaster, so whether it's like hurricanes or let me think like BP oil spill or when the you know recession happened, what we find is that different needs bubble up. Okay. And so what we've seen with this pandemic more than anything is that we have lots of seniors who need this. Right. We have our seasoned saints who are in need because they've given so much to our community. Absolutely. So how could we give back to them? So something that we're really starting to look at as an organization, and I would hope like churches and other organizations that have seasoned saints within them would really start thinking of is how can we give back to these folks who make sure that we continue to happen every day, right? right. So can we do, if you don't do it already, can we do a sick and shut in mind? Can we, if we have food boxes or if we have extra food or food drives, make sure that we offer to them first, you know, before we give to anybody else? Can we make sure that their basic needs and their spiritual needs are covered? Um, I have a friend and she was on the sick and shut in list for her organization. Okay. And you don't have to, they don't have to be sick and shut in. Maybe right. they're they're just a seasoned saint, and Absolutely. I just want to call. So can we divide that list up yeah. and connect with them and make sure that they're okay? Um, pray with them if they need. Do Bible reading if they need in a way that they need it. Because many of them may not do Facebook. They may not do Absolutely. social media and connect in that right. way. Right. So how can I connect with them and still stay connected? So let's just give them a phone call. Yeah. You know. So create these things like that that could be easier to do, but still help us stay connected to people that feel so isolated. Absolutely. And and really knowing like who in our organizations are alone. Absolutely. Okay. So who doesn't have
have that kind of family yeah, contact. Not, yeah. It's like Sunday may be, not just the season saints, but Sunday may be the only contact that this single woman or man has with their community. Yeah. So how can we remember to allow them to remember that they're loved and that they're, you know, connected? Because some of the things that make us anxious and depressed, one of the bigger factors is that we don't have a connection to community. So uh, just okay. having somebody, and if they don't answer your call, keep calling. Right, right. Because we don't know where they are emotionally. And so Absolutely. if I'm in a dark space, I'm not in a space that I can connect with you. But yeah. if I keep calling you, because the first time you call me, I may feel like, he doesn't care about me. Yeah. You know, he's just calling me, he's a pastor, and he has to, right. right? But if you keep doing it, and I keep each week saying, no, 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 I have forgot to you. Absolutely. I'm gonna call you every yeah. week. Absolutely. You know, until you tell me, do not call me anymore, yeah. I'm gonna keep calling you. Because I want you to know that I care about you, right. that I love you, and I'm here for you. And I think that that's really, really important in doing this sometimes. Yeah, I think, you know, it's interesting you said that because one of the things that uh, hit me, I want to say right when we were going, we were going strictly online, because my, our church did not have any type of digital mm -hmm. footprint mm -hmm. prior to this. Mm -hmm. uh, we were going, working towards it, mm -hmm. but we had to like crash course it. And so one of the things I did put in place uh, with with our seasoned saints, we, we came with a congregation of care ministry, mm -hmm. and we call them care heroes. Mm -hmm. And so basically, there we, we sign maybe ten people per person, maybe five or six people. Mm -hmm. And basically, your job is to make contact with them weekly. That's awesome. You know, for that express mm -hmm. purpose, because we, I started to think, you know, even though I'm on Facebook and I'm on other social media platforms, there are others who, you know. Who, you know, they don't have, some of them don't have, you know, Wi-Fi in their house Absolutely. and things like that. Absolutely. It's just, you know, and, and so we have to consider them. So therefore, we're all, also offering Sunday school on a conference call, which allows them to call in. That's and awesome. then Bible study tonight, well, whatever. But yeah, yeah. yeah. So it, it'll be, it'll be uh, on Tuesday. I didn't mean to say tonight, but it's on Tuesdays at 6. Mm -hmm. And what it, what, it, what it does, it not only allows us to study the Word together, mm -hmm. but most of all, we can interact. Yep. And so we thought it's funny. We were we were saying we you know we should we should mute the call because you know so much background noise and you know certain people don't know how to mute the phone. Right. But what we found out is hearing each other's voices seemed to boost the morale mm -hmm. on the call, and it was it was it was so nice and so to the point where we just decided you know what we'll put up with the background right. noise just to hear. Uh, a seasoned saint who's 80 years old, we haven't heard in two months. Voice hear, hear them say, "Amen" to something that was saying, you know. And so it's it's been a, it's been a it's been a, a, a good juggle for us, I think, uh, with that because, like you said, some so many so many things are intensified. I think in isolation uh, because you don't have the various outlets. And then I guess the thing I was thinking about as you were talking is while the pandemic is going on, life is still happening every day. Every day. So whatever was going on, right. other problems, family problems or issues or health, it didn't stop. Uh -huh. You know, and so now you're talking about compounded issues that now are like con consuming people and overwhelming people. And so even uh, I was in a preaching series uh, when we were last week was in church, but now I have to shift the focus and more more hopeful, uplifting because that's what people need. Um, it's, 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 it's such a, a difficult thing. Mm -hmm. now, now, let me ask you, so have you seen, uh, statistically, have you seen an increase in suicides or people reporting depression? Have you? Um, we've seen an increase, uh, yes, absolutely. And so one of the programs that we have is we are contracted by United Way, to okay. United Way 211. Okay. And that's a community resource line that we provide for Southwest Alabama. So if people have health and human service needs, all they have to do is dial 211. And they'll put in their zip code and they'll be directed to our office. So there are, I think, nine 211s across the state. And so we're a part of a statewide network. So say that again, you said they all they have to pick up their phone, yep. press dial 211, yep. you know, yep. and then it'll ask for their zip code. Their zip code. Yep. Are y'all getting this? <laughs> uh, these, because this is this is so good because these are resources. Part of why I wanted to sit down with you because there are so many resources that we don't know about. Yeah. Right? Because we, you know, some of us just have, you know, we don't step outside right. of our bubble. Right. Of course. So yeah, all you have to do if you're struggling with some things, 
just dial 211 mm -hmm. and they'll ask you for your zip code yep. and you'll be directed directly to this office yes. and they'll make sure that you do that. You make yes. sure that they take care of your needs. That is, that's amazing. Yep. Wow. Yep. Go ahead. And so we have over a thousand programs in there and they can be federal, they, they can be federal, state, or local. Okay. And so what we do is we, um, it could be anything, it could be basic needs, so I need help with my rent or utilities, rent um, utilities. I need okay. food, wow. it can be I need counseling, it could be information about um, substance use or if, you know somebody needs a program to go to, it could be about someone who's an abuse survivor or going through some kind of trauma, they need counseling, wow. so I mean it varies. Just a myriad of issues. Yes, myriad of issues that they can call and get connected to organizations or programs that provide health and human services. And they're all set up through the United Way and it's all basically location sensitive. So, mm -hmm. wow, mm -hmm. that's amazing. Mm -hmm. I didn't know that. And they don't have to be a United Way agency to be a part of it. Okay. So like if someone has, someone in your congregation has a nonprofit okay. and they would like to be listed in our database, all okay. they have to do is call us and we can get them in that database. Oh, so other mm -hmm. nonprofits can mm -hmm. be a part of two on one. Nonprofits are churches. So like oh, if wow. your church provided uh, food to the community. So then Which that, you do, yeah. yeah. And if y'all wanted us to publicize that through two on one, okay. you could just send us the form and we'll pick it up. Absolutely, because yeah. we, we actually, and I, that's one of the things I really, really fell in love with when I got here. Mm -hmm. uh, I haven't even been here yet. But one of the things I found out was that uh, every second Saturday, I believe, mm -hmm. They're feeding, the, you know, oh, awesome. the unfortunate people, mm -hmm. and and then there's another group that goes once a month to the homeless shelter, which I've actually gone with them. Oh, that's awesome! And so it's, it's that my church is so good. They they're, they they don't uh, you know publicize it as much, mm -hmm. and I'm like, what are you guys doing? Like this is this is good stuff, it's right? Very good stuff. You know, uh, so definitely we I definitely may consider doing that because like mm -hmm. you say. I, I, I love, this is the thing I love about any type of chaos or traumatic situation that occurs in our country. Mm -hmm. It seems to galvanize everybody it and bring everybody together. together. Mm -hmm. And you, and you know, I would have, I would not have had, you know, this conversation had this not have been a really, you know right. what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. it, and so that kind of stuff, I love that. I love that. So what are some other things you would think uh, may, 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 may some other resources you think that, that may be useful that we can put out? Uh, to our we um, a couple of programs that we have. We have consumer credit counseling service. Okay. So if folks have struggles with um, their finances, they need their credit report um, pulled. It looks like that they are going to maybe have to file bankruptcy. If they look think about, they might lose their home. If they need help with their utilities or anything like that. So um, because we're a nonprofit agency, our goal is to look out for the client. Okay. So I think um, so that client can come in and sit with us free of charge, and wow. we'll do a review with them. We can review their finances. We can see what's going on. Particularly, I think if they think that they're in the process of either losing their home to foreclosure, okay. or um, if like their rent is an issue or something like that, to call us as soon as possible, and then we can set up an appointment with them. And then on the more exciting times. There have been several people taking advantage of the fact that interest rates are low right now okay. and looking at buying homes. And wow. so if that's something that they're thinking about, we can do the pre-purchase counseling and let them know of some different um, opportunities in the community where they can possibly buy down, down payment assistance. Okay. So that's one of the programs that we have. We also have our family counseling program where we um, do counseling on a sliding fee scale. So the most that a person is, will pay is $50. Okay. And that's for any of the sessions. Um, Are you and mm -hmm. wow, just mm -hmm. fifty dollars. Yep, just fifty dollars. Wow. Um, and and several of our counseling, depending upon what's going on, if somebody is a survivor of abuse or trauma or anything like that, we provide counseling free of charge. Yes. Are y'all <laughs> Are y'all getting this? I, listen, comment at the bottom. This is this is rich information. I mean, and you know, and, I, and, I, and the reason why I, I, I'm so excited about it because again. These are things you may people may not know yeah. that you know there are answers, there are options, there Absolutely. are resources that we're not aware of. Yeah. So wow. Absolutely. That's amazing. Did you Absolutely. feel so if you're dealing with certain what what's the name? What's, it's um abuse or trauma yeah. or anything, and we know that during isolation these issues are it's a, yeah. yeah. Yeah, absolutely. 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 Usually one crisis and people tell me like they felt like they were crazy, and it's like you're not. If you have had just a lot of struggles and a lot of heavies in your life, know that 
that each time you go through something that's really heavy, it's going to come back up. Yeah. And that's just how our brain works. So how we want to deal with that, how we want to connect with that, you're not crazy because of it, but there are people out there that can help talk to you and help you through it. Wow. Yeah. Wow. I love that. I love that. And, and I think, uh, I hope you are, we're going to put at the end of this interview, uh, we're going to put the information that, that we've talked about uh, on, 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 the, on the screen so you can take that, that information out, take advantage of it. Listen, you all, you have other options. God did not just give you a pastor. He gave you licensed practitioners who are amazing. As you can see, she doesn't have paper in front of her. <laughs> Uh, she's just she's going straight off her head because this this is what she does this is what she does and so I believe that there's there's a there's a marriage between spiritual and practical means of helping keeping ourselves mentally healthy so so tell me this I, I should have said this in the beginning but how long have you been in this particular <laughs> practice longer than I want to imagine <laughs> okay okay it's, it's been a long time uh, I've been doing this work in some capacity since I left college and I've been agency director probably for about 15 years. 15 years. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So and we built like an organization that helps our tagline is real solutions for real problems. We know that there are just everyday folks who just we, we have struggles because we breathe. And so Absolutely. we're gonna, you know, relationships end and we need help. We may be victims of abuse or trauma, we need help. We know that we may not manage our finances to the best of our ability. Right. And we need help. Right. And so we, we want to feel connected to the community. And so there may be resources that we need. Mm -hmm. And so what we've done over the past few, over, you know, forever, because we've been in the community since 1958, we've created wow. an organization that really can address those issues. Right. And just help us, you know, with everyday stressors. That's and so true. you don't have to go at it alone. There are people that can help. Yeah. And, I think, and, I think, and more than anything, that's what I wanted to kind of cover with, with, with our discussion today because as the message that, that, that I just ministered basically is dealing with the various issues that come up mm -hmm. and what does the Bible, how does the Bible say? Mm -hmm. But I think it's so important. Uh, I, am not, uh, I am not one of those super spiritual people mm -hmm. who just believe all you gotta do is just pray mm -hmm. and know you need counseling too. Right, Absolutely. right. faith without works, Absolutely. right? It's dead. And so Absolutely. I just believe that it's, it's, it's incumbent upon me as a pastor mm -hmm to make sure that we are balanced, that, that, our, that my, my, my members are balanced, that we are so committed to the fact that, oh, hey guys, we're gonna pray, we're gonna preach, mm -hmm. but at the same time, we're also gonna point you in the direction of somebody who can, who's more qualified. Because the truth is, as a pastor, I can give some good advice, but there are certain things that I just, I'm not good at, right? And I, and I would much rather defer it to a, a licensed professional like yourself mm -hmm. Uh, then try to take on this super spiritual role, which I, I think it, spirituality has its place, right. but at, at the same time has to be a little balanced as well. Right. Yeah, good. yeah. So I, I think I really, I really appreciate your time. Oh, you're welcome. Uh, listen, were you blessed? Were you blessed by what was shared today? Let me see the comments. Don't be shy. If you were blessed by it, we're gonna go ahead and uh, go right into our giving. We're going right into our giving right now. Uh, but as soon as I get through talking, you're going to see her information. And, and tell us the name of your company again. Lifelines Counseling Service. Lifelines Counseling Service. We're going to have that information for you, the 211 number. We're going to also have that just so you will know that you don't have to face this season by yourself. After everything that was shared today, I hope the answer to my next question is a resounding yes. Do you feel refreshed? If you do, if you feel refreshed today, would you do us the favor of sharing this video with your family, your friends, or your loved ones? Also, if you're on Facebook, you can host a watch party and share this video on your page to help refresh someone's day. Also, brothers and sisters, right before we go, we're gonna get ready to give together. We're gonna get ready to give together. Uh, the four ways that you can give at our church was just on the screen. It's also in the caption on this video. You can find the four ways to give one is by, by envelope, by sending to our P.O. box. 
Also, you can give through text to give. That number is in the caption as well. You can also give through the Givelify app, which can be found on Google Play as well as the Apple Store. Last but certainly not least, you can go to our website at thewellmobile.org and give online securely. Listen, by whatever means you're going to give today, whether it's by envelope, whether it's by uh, text to give, online, whatever it is, would you, would you hold it up? If you're going to use your phone, you're going to go by envelope, would you hold it up with me today? Hold it up with me today. Hold it up. And we're going to recite uh, our, our giving affirmation as we recite every Sunday. And it simply goes like this. Lord, thank you for another opportunity to give back to you a portion of what you've given to me. Come on, brothers and sisters, let's give now. Listen, let's give now, let's give now, let's give now so that we can continue the work here at Aimwell Baptist Church, a.k.a. The Well. Listen, I hope you were blessed today. And just in case, brothers and sisters, uh, we don't see you uh, for another few days, just know we love you. And in the words of our very own Lula Payne, we love you and you can't do anything about it.